Hello, my friend. How are you? Hello. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I have it. I don't know why I can't hear it. The headset is connected. Maybe I have to call back. Headset. Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Hello. Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Oh, now. Okay, okay. I have Because I didn't press the right button, I have the headset. So. It's all right, my friend. Okay. What, what do you want to say to us? Go ahead. You are live. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, basically, uh, um, Thank you, you know, for all your your work and stuff like that. I very appreciate. It. I'm very grateful for that. And uh, it's like you said before, you know, Islam is it's like a bazaar. You know, when I first came into the religion, you know, I was uh, basically a you know Salafi and following the Saudi scholars and and uh, thinking, oh, I'm on the saved sect, you know, because Muhammad said 73 groups all in the fire except one, you know, and I was very proud to be I'm on the saved group. But then later you find all of these other groups claiming, you know, oh, I am Salafi, the Jihadi, the Takfiri, and all these other groups. And it's basically like one, you know, one big bazaar. You can pick and choose your beliefs uh, as, as you know, you fit. But I'm very grateful to finally, you know, to leave the religion. I just wish it was a lot sooner. I wasted a lot of time. But, uh, you know, it's just um, very uh, good to have somebody like you here. And we definitely have to grow this work because it's very important. So. And I also wanted to talk to you about something I've been researching, you know, uh, yes. basically uh, Christianity again, you know, because I grew up as a Roman Catholic, but I've been listening to a lot of books and I didn't feel comfortable, you know, that I'm going to go back and be like an atheist or an agnostic. But I've been listening to this uh, book called uh, On the Incarnation by uh, Athanasius of Alexandria. And something struck my mind, you know, I'm starting to connect the dots like you. You have a gift for that being able to connect the dots. And I heard him say that Jesus, you know, for example, he was the uh, so he was the sovereign over death, you know, the sacrifice for death for us to the point where nobody feared, the Christians didn't fear death anymore because they have, you know, eternal life and they give their life up for, for the Lord. No problem. So many of them died. So he was, the you know, the sacrifice for death for us. And then I remembered there was a hadith that I used to listen to, you know, when I was a Muslim. It says, you know, when everybody's in the paradise, the Jannah and the, the fire, the death will be brought in the form of a ram. I believe it's a black ram. Right. And it will be slaughtered. It will be slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And it will be said, oh, people of the fire, no death for you. You're going to be forever. Oh, people of the paradise, no death for you. Forever you will be. So I started connecting the dots in my head. You know, you always say copy paste. This is very intriguing because the Muslim will say, oh, you believe. And I used to say this too to the Christian. You believe the a man he died for you so you can have eternal life and da 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 but now you have a hadith and they believe the ram will be sacrificed for them and no they will not be taken from the paradise eternal life for them so it's it's funny you know when you can connect these dots and you have a gift for that i'm hoping i could my brain could start you know thinking more like you <laughs> but i well, break you know well, i'm glad uh, yeah. for you first that you left islam my friend and uh, good to to uh Good always to like to repair what uh, the damage we do sometime in our life to ourselves, and uh, you know, uh, I'm happy that you were able to notice that you are in the wrong, uh, the wrong place. But uh, I want to ask yeah. you, like, you know, when you became a Muslim, I mean, you, you you used not to be a Muslim and you became a Muslim, how they were able to convince you to join Islam, if you don't mind to share with us? Well, I was going through, you know, a depression, and I just feel like. <laughs> You know, obviously, you see, you know, the devil, he's very skillful and in how he like you always say, copy paste. And he, he doesn't come to you with just 100 percent falsehood. So I found this religion. Oh, wow. They have chapter Mary. They have Jesus. They have Quran. They have everything more than, you know, the Catholic. It's even better. You know, it's more upgrade two point two point zero. You know, so I felt like I was upgrading my faith, you know, and there's something that was making more sense, Tawheed, which is nothing but ridiculous, you know, like you said yesterday, or, uh, you know, the not, you know, the, the, exactly like that you want to speak about all the time. It's not exactly what, you know, they lie to you and it's not the true meaning of what they say. So, and I felt that that was, you know, the truth at the time. And then uh, some of the things that they used to say that kept me for in, in the religion was like, oh, how come, you know, when the scholars used to give the classes, they would say, it's not possible that God would let Muhammad be for, 
23 years and give him victory if he's a false prophet. Or they would say something like, uh, I asked you the other day, but you didn't get a chance to answer. They would say, okay, uh, you know, uh, Abu Lahab, he has a surah, you know, where he's going to be in the fire with his wife. If Islam is false, all uh, Abu, what's his name? Abu Jahl or, uh, or one of those, you know, he, all they had to say was, yes, I believe in Muhammad. Now your Quran is false, but he died, you know, not believing in Islam because uh, like the surah says, so that's, they're trying to say that that's a real prophecy, you know, it's true and just silly things like this, you know. Well, you know, about Abu Lahab, actually, <clears throat> Yeah. You know, a person, you know, let us say, let us say, how, how come the Muslims, they say that Muhammad prophesied about, about, about Abu Lahab, but they don't mention that Muhammad, he said that they will never accept your religion. The Quran said that the people of Quraysh, they will never accept your religion. And later, you know, uh, uh, you know, all of them convert to Islam. Oh, okay. That well, is that, that's a good point. All of them, well, you know. Who, uh, as an example, you know, uh, the person his name is Khadim al Walid, right? Yes. Okay, Khadim al Walid was yeah. from the enemy of Allah. Okay, how yes. Khadim al Walid became a Muslim? Yeah, I remember then, in Uhud, he, yeah. he was fighting the Muslim, and right. then he, he was on the other side. He was on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So the Quran yeah. confirmed uh, that you have your religion, I have my mine, and you will never believe in what I believe. You will never believe, mm. right? You will never believe. Yes. Right. So, uh, uh, how you will never believe, and then they believe. Mm. Okay. And was That's true. That's it, was Abu Lahab one of them? Yes, because it says they will ne all of them. They will never believe. If Abu Lahab is included, okay, Abu Lahab he did not believe. But what about the rest? Yeah, they believed. You know. And anyway, yes. if if there's any Muslim, he will say. That the Quran does that does not say that. Well, here we go. We have the Quran in front of us. Who is the Muslim want to call me? And you know, and and show me that I'm 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 not telling the truth. It says, in uh, always I make fun of this uh, chapter in the Quran because it's it's kind of funny, uh, where it says, right. oh, 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 oh oh you know, uh, uh, I believe in what you uh, when you believe not, and I, I I will eat what you eat not, etc. But 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 it's falafel, you know. Uh, uh, right, and then at the end, we will find that all those who Muhammad was talking about them, they believe. Mm. Who is the one who did not believe? Abu Bakr, Abu 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 Lahab, you know? Okay, what about the rest? The chapter of Al Kafirun, yeah. and this is the Muslim translation. Let me show it in the screen. Chapter 109, very few verses actually, the whole chapter. Say, O ye that reject faith, I worship not which you worship nor you will worship which i worship <laughs> do you see it do you see it yes okay yeah so refutation for what you said is very easy i mean what they told you about abu lahab it's in the front of you right here muhammad he predicts that they will never worship what he worship mm. and he will not worship the worship and both are broken you remember the story where muhammad he bowed down to the daughters of allah and he said uh, the, the, their intercession is a must, the three daughters of Allah, the satanic verses, yes. remember them, right? So, Muhammad here, he right. worshiped their idols, and then later they worship his idol. So, Muhammad yeah. was a double false prophet twice. He said he will never worship their idols, and he did. And then he started actually praying to the Kaaba. Remember, Muhammad in the beginning, he was praying toward Jerusalem, right? Okay, why Muhammad he is in Mecca but praying toward Jerusalem? Exactly like you said, you know, just to when you're in a weak state no, and you have to appease the other group, you at, know. At that moment, at that moment, Muhammad trying to convince the Arab that he is not a problem for them, he is a Jew. Mm. <laughs> I am a Jew because they have no problem with the Jews. So he's trying to appeal himself to the Jews, trying to make himself a Jew. So in the beginning, he is praying to Jerusalem. Okay, what Muhammad have to do with Jerusalem? At least at that moment, the Muslim they say that Muhammad he went. To the Jerusalem by the dream, right? Okay. Right. At that moment, Muhammad did not go yet. So why he was praying to Jerusalem? Hmm. No point. answer. The sim the answer is very simple. Muhammad was trying to make himself more appealing to the Jews. Says, "I am a Jew like you." To the point, look, I pray toward Jerusalem. Muhammad he fast the fast of the Jews. Why to make them believe he's a Jew? All right. But. Uh, 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 the Muslims always they have a very silly answers, and you know, and they don't expect you to be educated. 
and this is why they throw at you things which is very easy to refute I mean it, it take it will not take me a second even to get all the claims of Muhammad being a prophet to be busted yeah they don't expect you to be educated but uh you know a lot of the books and I bought so many wasting money translation wrong and I tried to you know many of us when we convert we want to go to uh we apply to go to Medina we want to learn the language but I didn't get accepted and I'm very happy now I didn't but I learned you know to speak a little bit read the Quran but still it's not enough to give you the right education and to understand later on when you start getting wisdom and you listen to you you can see you know this religion is nothing but a schizophrenia one time it tell you to do this another time like even with my family you know i you see oh he tells you paradise is under the feet of your mother big for your family i want to love my fa another time don't you know uh take friends like you said before with your father so i was one day friendly with my family another day oh they're filthy kafir oh they're dirty you know i was Make you it make you crazy, really. At <laughs> the oh. same time, how how paradise is under the feet of your mother, but your mother will go to hell. Right. Oh, that's a good point too. Good connection. I See, mean, wow. how stupid that is. Uh, you know oh. what what they say to you? Oh, yeah, she go to hell, but you have to be good to your mother. But this is not a big deal. I mean, even the Arab who have no religion, right. they are good to their mothers. I mean, everybody is a, is good to his mother. What a big deal. You know why right, exactly why a human being will not be good to his mother i mean this is stupid to not to be unless you yeah. are an idiot or, or a criminal even criminals right. are good to their mothers you know they, maybe they kill outside but when it's come <clears> to their mother they kiss their, their hand so uh, uh muhammad he try to make himself a prophet by adopting some teaching from other books the same as they deceive you they said okay you said to yourself okay well they believe in jesus they believe in mary virgin mary sound good but this is was to deceive you you see if a, if a somebody yeah. if somebody is a fraud and he is a thief you want to go inside your house is he going to knock at your door and say i'm a thief no he will wear a uniform no. of a cable guy huh? mm. and he'll say hey uh, i am a cable guy and I have my id and he hang a fake id and he wear a uniform and he said to you i am from at t cable company and uh, i want to check the cable please and then you trust him because he's you wearing a uniform he go inside your right. bedroom he is alone there. He asks you, like, can you, uh, etc., check that thing? So he make you leave the room for a second. He opened the drawer. He grabbed whatever he can find, and he leave. And then two days after, you found that your whatever things is gone. And then you said to yourself, what I did? They called the company. You find they never sent anyone. Muhammad, he used the uniform of the cable company. He needed yes. the Jews book. He needed the Christian books. He needed all the names, which is very well known, to the point even he approved Alexander the Great. Yeah. You know? Anyone is famous is known Muhammad. He put him in his book the story of the seven sleepers Muhammad he heard that the Christians they teach in their churches the story of the seven sleepers But this is a fiction story written by a Christian bishop To teach the, the Christian youth about being patient and because you will be victorious Muhammad he took it he put it in the Quran in chapter 18 and then he made it as coming from Allah and true story But this is a fiction story all the Christians know that so yeah. this man, he have no hesitation to copy anything around, you know? And, you know, this is why we have to be careful as a Christians. Not everyone says to us, you know, something we believe in him. So what if somebody came to me, I said, I believe that Mary was virgin. Trust me, the, the Satan, the devil, he knew that too. Satan, he knew who was Jesus. He knew who was Mary. So I'm not going to take Satan to be my, you know, guidance just because he said i believe in jesus to be god well he knows who is god there's no way that satan don't know who's god he knew so we have to be careful and we do not we should not let them to play with our uh, uh, you know let's say a uh, uh, trust islam is a religion to play with the trust islam yes. Muhammad. you see when, when a muslim he, he speak to a white man as an example he will not mention to him the slavery of the white man to the black man is that correct it's correct but when they speak, speak to a black person to convert him they say do you know what the white man did to you oh the white yeah. man he enslaved you he right unjust. that's why they yeah the black when they usually when they usually convert because you know a lot of them they become salafi i was with them they change their name oh now he's abdul uh, abdullah he's this you know and they yeah. get rid of his slave name but they convince him they convince him that islam is a religion which protect the slaves and they will mention to him bilal they will not mention bilal to a white man right. they will mention bilal to a black man but bilal, it was interesting but but muhammad, what you said. But, but bilal die but muhammad die and bilal is still a slave right exactly i was going to say <laughs> that i heard you say last week that 
I never, I never, I never connected dots on that one. He was still a, so yeah, what the yeah. heck, you know? So, okay, Bilal is the first one. Do you know that the first one who called for the prayer was a, a, a black? He was a black slave. This is say it as it is. Why Muhammad he owned this man? And he called for the prayer because he's a slave. The, the white man, the free man, he don't want to do that. It's a very hard job. Five times a day, go scream. There's no microphone at that time. You have to wake up the whole town, go up to the roof where it's very hot. It's a, it's a scary desert. And he have to scream in the early morning, first time to first one to wake up. Because yeah. he's a slave. Not because it was not a luxury for him. It was a duty. Muhammad he ordered Bilal to call for the prayer. He did not ask Bilal. He did not say, hey, Bilal, do you like to be the one who called for the prayer? No, he ordered Bilal. And right now I changed the Muslim to call me right now to show him to show him where Muhammad he ordered Bilal to call for the prayer. Yep. All right, my so friend. That's... Do you have do you have any question, anything you want to say, you want to add? Oh, that's basically it. You know, I just, like I said, I was one of those people, you know, used to say, oh, your Bible, your Bible. But in time, the Quran, like you, you said, it's like, uh, you know, yellow pages. A couple of verses saying this, a couple of verses more going now from this to the end to that. And I said, oh, but it's so beautiful, you know. It's like a rhyme, but it's not. It's like a rap music, you know. I was reading, blah, 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 blah. You know, like, sounds so good, but. I'm glad I got past that. You know, I really you know, you, know, you, remi you remind me. Uh, I was talking to somebody about uh, somebody said to me, I, you know, but uh, can you explain to me why the Quran recitation is beautiful? I said, because they bring you someone have a nice uh, voice. What about you hear yeah. somebody have an ugly voice reciting the Quran? Those guys, whatever recite, whatever they say, you will like it because they have a nice voice. Mm. It's not about because the Quran is, is uh, you, know, you don't even understand what he's saying. There's a Muslim right. sheikh, Muslim sheikh from Saudi Arabia. Uh, the guy, actually the video on YouTube, uh, uh, the Muslim sheikh, uh, they have like a conference in France. So people, they speak French and they have a translator. So he said, today I'm going to make in front of you an uh, experiment. I will invite one of you who is not a Muslim and I will recite for him in Arabic two sentences. One is Quran and one is not a fake Quran. And I will ask him which one he like more. For sure, I guarantee you he will like the Quran. So he recite the Quran and he recite a, a, a sentence which he make it sound like the Quran. And then he asked the French guy, which one you like more? The French guy, he chose the one which is not the Quran. Oh wow! He said, uh, "Okay, let me let me say it to you again." <laughs> <laughs> this is very interesting. Yeah, let me say it to you. Okay, you know what? Let me let me uh, uh, give me a second, and I will find you the video where this guy he it's very embarrassing. Oh, okay. But you know, but the point is, Quran always recited, especially those they post him in YouTube, etc. By somebody who have a very nice voice. And right, or they bring the small kids. When I used to go to the mesh, they bring the little, you know, in Ramadan, the five-year-old, six-year-old. Oh, it's a miracle! And he recited in front of every, you know, it's just <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, wow. and, uh, 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 and at the same time, they say to you that Islam is the only religion memorize uh, the Quran. You, uh, children memorize the Quran. You will not find somebody who converted to Islam in age, which means he's a man who's growing adult. He knows the Quran by heart. No. So what they do, they make a child keep repeating him, beating, beating him until he memorized the Quran from the age of six years old. At that right. time, I remember not until now, commercial, I learned when I was a child. I can recite to you the commercial, which isn't, you know, the TV, like song for chocolate or etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until now, it's in my head. When you are a child, you, you memorize anything. This is not because it's, it's Quran, because it's you are a child. Anything, you force people, you force children to learn it, they will learn it. Can right. you memorize the Quran when you are adult? It's difficult, especially we convert and we don't have the language. Nobody you know, we can. Try. Nobody. I challenge anyone to show me one Muslim who converted to Islam, and he was an Arab, not even a, you know, so that, to make it easier. And then he memorized the Quran by heart. Even Muhammad himself, he forget the Quran. Like Muhammad oh, in the yeah. Hadith, he said, he heard a Muslim reciting the Quran. 
you said uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you remind me of verses uh, I forgot uh, and, and chapters I, I forgot about you know and right. but, but this is the prophet yeah. the prophet himself is forgetting Quran and he heard a Muslim saying the Quran and he says okay well I I really uh, 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 you know uh, uh, I appreciate that you remind me of them Muhammad, Muhammad in different hadith actually he said memorizing Quran is the same as trying to hold the camel to a rope oh yeah the camel yeah you know which means it's yeah. very hard you know you cannot memorize the Quran trying to explain what trying to explain why he cannot memorize the Quran and ad additional to that Muhammad this is why he came with the story or the lie that Allah he sent him the Quran in seven letters you know the story about the seven letters, right? Yeah, the uh, okay. seven pirates or something okay, like why that. Why Allah did not send to Jesus his book in seven letters? Yeah. Why he did not send it to Moses? Why he did not send very it good. to any other messenger? The answer is very simple. Muhammad is a liar. And look. It's good. It's you, good when you can connect the dots instead of like us. We say, oh, it's that's miracle. That's, you know, instead of now we're able to use wisdom like what from you what you're teaching that will connect you know, everything you see my friend it, always if you <laughs> understand something you have to connect the dots together right it's like, like a, it's like you know a, a, a tv it's a machine it's a blind machine receive dots doesn't receive images but tv doesn't receive images right. receive dots and then the machine put the dots next to each other to make a picture for you so in yeah. order to always to have a picture you have to connect the dots and as you see here muhammad is saying to jibreel when Jibreel came to him with the Quran, he said to him, I beg you to tell Allah, I beg Allah his burden and forgiveness. My community has not the strength to do so. To do what? To remember the Quran. And Muhammad, yep. he keeps saying that. And then he says it clearly, they are not capable. Okay. They are not capable of what? To memorize the Quran. Okay. So what is the solution? Give it to me in two letters. Two letters still they are not capable give it to me in three then four then five then six then seven okay where is the seven recitation how a small community in the time of muhammad they speak the same language of muhammad still they are not capable of reciting the quran but yet a child in pakistan who you beat him until he died from beating forcing him to learn the quran he can recite the quran right those are arab in his town not a Pakistani in Pakistan. My people, he's talking about the Arab people. Those are Arab. There's nobody there who don't speak Arabic. But yet they are not capable of reciting the Quran in one recitation. So how the guy in Pakistan, he recite the recitation of Hafs? It's one recitation. Yeah. So here the story, Muhammad is a, again is a false prophet because he claimed that they are not capable. And That's just ridiculous. And again, you know, why Allah sent him the Quran in one recitation and Muhammad is correcting Allah? What kind of God? Muhammad says to him, my people are not capable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows better? Yes. Allah, Allah or Muhammad? Shouldn't Allah from the beginning? It's Muhammad. It's Allah should say to Muhammad, like if the conversation should happen the opposite. Allah sent right. Quran and then he sent him second Quran. Muhammad, he says, why the second Quran? Allah, he will say to him, your people are not capable. That makes sense. But God, right. he sent Quran and Muhammad, he says to Allah, oh, my people are not capable, which means Allah do not know that they are not capable. And then Allah, he made yeah. a bazaar with him. So he sent him the second Quran. And Muhammad is still don't agree. He said, no, I want more. He sent him the third Quran. And he still Muhammad don't agree until Muhammad is satisfied. Who is the one who yeah, decide what, it is seven? It's Muhammad. Whatever he, you know, one of the things we used to say, oh, Islam is, is is some kind of miracle because it came down in stages, like you said before, 23 years. But later, when you use your brain and you connect the dots, you, say, you can realize this is not showing truth or miracle. This is showing how absurd that Muhammad, he just make things as he go along, like, you know, as a bazaar, just shopping. Oh, Jibril told me this. Jibril told, uh, Allah told me this, correcting things, or even with the Banu Quraitha, as you mentioned before, Jibril came to me and said, why you put down your sword? I didn't put down my sword. And they went to kill them and, you know, look at the pubic hair, which is disgusting. It, 
You know, I don't understand how I, I didn't see this before. And I could be a Muslim and look at that and not be disgusting. It's a filthy man, you know, to go look at everybody's private parts and balls. And actually, wow, actually, really, it's actually, actually, I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I mean, uh, it's <laughs> I agree with you. It's embarrassing to be a Muslim. But, you know, yeah, yeah. all of us, we sometimes we, we, we have our failure. And the yeah. good thing is, you know, like when a horse, he fell down, he stand up and he run again. Right. That is yeah, not really, forward. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, right. but the problem is the shame will be if you fail and you stay there because you think you are right there, you know. Uh, but you mentioned the bazaar. Muhammad, even he mentioned that in the heaven, there is there is a uh, there is a bazaar and the bazaar have a Playboy magazine. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know that hadith, right? Yeah, I heard, I've heard it a couple of times and I heard you go over it too, you know, and just like you always bring the reference, you know, and it's just, it's reality. No matter what anybody says, that's part of the teachings. <laughs> yeah, what kind, of, what kind of heaven? There is a paradise in it. And in this paradise, uh, uh, you know, people, they, uh, they, they, have, uh, they buy Im images of women and men. And when you like the image, you go inside and you have sex with it. Right. I mean, and you know, it's, it's never made me feel comfortable, even when I was... Uh, a Muslim, and I read this verse about the uh, what surahs that I forgot. Now I used to be more better with the reference, but about the per the boys, they look like pearls and three three hundred yeah. uh, slaves. Yeah, what so far, I, yeah. I don't I don't even want even this life. I don't want any slave. I want to do everything for myself. If I drop something on the floor, I don't expect you anybody, even the restaurant, the waitress, to pick it up. I'm going to clean it. So why I need slaves in, in paradise? You know, it's disgusting. I want to do things myself. I, it makes me feel better as a more valued man you know to do so it's like i start realizing later that's just so ridiculous you need you know, service first of all uh, uh like uh, they, they when they speak to black people they mention that islam against slavery and then right. you promise me in heaven that i will have slaves i mean who is the stupid here either slavery is good or slavery is bad now we are in heaven yet in heaven there is no justice in right. heaven, there is a slave. Why a human being will be my slave? Yeah. Just because I pray exactly. to Allah five times a day and I killed some people, <laughs> so He will make me have eighty yeah. thousand little boys, and they are little children, which, which means not only they are slaves. This is a child abuse, which make it even more a, right. a, evil a crime. And what about yeah. the, what about the virgins? It's ridiculous. And I like what you said one time. You said it's better to be a slave in this life. At least you know you're going to die or eventually end. But slave in there will never end. <laughs> It yeah, you will have eternity of slavery. Right, right. And, you know, I challenge the Muslim, by the way, who, who keep always speaking to the black African, uh, which really, I, you know, the, the black African, I really admire them because, you see, they, they, they had a lot of suffering because of slavery. But yeah. all of us, we need to remember history. That history always was history of slavery. And uh, in Africa, as an example, they used to slave each other too. And even the Jews, they've been enslaved by African you know, remember the slaves of the Jews by the, by the Egyptian. Egyptian are African, so slavery yes. was a, a, a common a practice. But then we have a religion who claim that they are against the slavery, but yet everything in this religion teaching that slavery is absolutely a way of life. How many slaves Muhammad he used to own? You see, I saw a video of a, a Muslim guy speaking in a, like a town hall or a Texas, something like this. He said, in the same building here, the one who built this building, the mayor, he used to be a slave owner. And I said to myself, look who's talking. Mm. A Muslim giving a speech about slave owners. When he's a prophet, right. he was slave owner. And not only that, he enforced slavery. There's many stories. And another uh, of his, right, of right. another thing they say too, that I'm sure you're aware of this. They, some of the scholars have the opinion that those slaves in the paradise will be the children of the kuffar, you know? Right. That's, uh, right yeah. Among, yeah, amongst. And, uh, and also, you said before, I wanted to touch on, you talked about the deeds, you know, uh, about the measurement and stuff like that. It was funny because it reminded me of something. It, uh, I remember studying in Islam, you know, with, with the scholars they were speaking, or a book I read that it said, if you don't have any more good deeds, your bad deeds will go on the Christian or Jew or whatever, and, and you will suck their good deeds. So if you, you if you don't you know you, you have no more uh, all your bad deeds is gone and then what can you do it suck it goes to them and you <laughs> and it's and just you you, yeah. you will hack you will hack their good deeds you know right right so what a, what a fake that's, religion that's what's gonna happen you know it's according to the, this uh, foolish hallucinating uh, nonsense but 
I'm just really thankful and grateful that, you know, and it's past, you know, and instead of being regretful, now I could at least use my story maybe to start working in this and uh, follow your footsteps and, you know, to try to save some other people. <laughs> well, I'm so happy for you, my friend. And feel free to call me anytime you wish if you have any uh, right. any comment you say, and especially because you have an experience of something happening with you. So uh, people, they can learn from someone uh, who who examined this cult and he, he joined it for some time. How many, how many years have you been as a Muslim before you leave? Uh, too long. You know, it was, like I said to you one time, it was early 2000s when I was on Pal Talk with you and, you know, and arguing. <laughs> Oh, you used to talk uh, to me in Pal Talk? You used to talk to me in the mic? Yeah, yeah, back in the day, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, you see, for me, it's very hard to remember. The red dot get bounced. That's because I was being <laughs> foolish like everybody else. I said, what your Bible says, your Bible this, and da 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 and oh. <laughs> the same thing like you hear them saying nowadays, you know. With, it's, uh, instead it's, of, it's funny, uh, it's, it's funny that, uh, how, how time come, and the one you yeah. think he is an enemy for you, you discover that he's a friend. Right. And you think maybe at that time, maybe you wish to kill me, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or are you praying, you know, oh, Allah curse him. You know, everything in Islam is about curse, like you said. When, uh, you know, when you talked about this debate between the Muhammad and the Christian, I think it was the Christians from Nejeron, right? And before, mm. you know, I never connected dots on this either until you enlightened me. Where you said, what kind of nonsense is this? They want to come for a debate. And he said, bring your, <laughs> your wife, bring my wife, bring your kid, bring... <laughs> And and Allah cursed the liar. Now I realize after hearing you, this is it's a really disgusting and absurd way to deal with somebody. They just want to debate with you. It's like, All right, thank you, my yeah, friend, no. for calling. And uh, please feel free to call me again anytime you wish. And maybe you can uh, definitely invite, invite, invite some Muslims to debate me. By the way, that would be a good idea too. If somebody you know he's a okay. convert or somebody you try to save him, let him have a conversation with me because it's always a start this way. In the beginning, they reject what you say, they get angry. But then after some time, they will find out that we are not in anything except the yeah. truth. Thank you, my friend, for calling.